Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. Joseph Parker and Derek Chisora have come face to face in fight week in their final press conference, delivering final verbal jabs, or at least Parker did. Chisora was quiet. So you can see here, this is Parker with a graphic from Matchroom. This fight will be 100% different from the first. I will knock Chisora out between rounds six and and 10. And given Joseph Parker has uh, no knockouts at anything approaching world level, quite a big claim, but uh, obviously new trainer, new setup, we will see what is going to happen in this fight. But in terms of Derek Chisora, I guess this graphic sums it up. Uh, he was quiet. He pulled a Deontay Wilder, said nothing in the press conference. He was silent. And you can see this little um, thing here. He's got over his uh, face, uh, over his uh, mouth, I should say, uh, Eddie, pay me to talk. That didn't happen, and he is being paid for this fight. But uh, anyway, we do have some other quotes to get to from Chisora a little bit later on, because uh, he did make some comments uh, earlier, which have been reported in a media release that came out at the start of Fight Week, which I will get to, which I've been intending to get to. But in terms of um, the press conference proper, and you can see here the uh, face-off, this is a clip from Derek Chisora's page, the fight doesn't seem to be a whole lot of energy, and maybe that's part of Derek Chisora's ploy just to, you know, not try to get Parker revved up or vice versa. I mean, it could be, um, I mean, Chisora's been a pretty volatile character. You know, this is obviously what he's doing now. The the fight week uh, press conference, his antics there, not talking, part of um, his mind games to try to get under Joseph Parker's skin. I'm not sure it'll face Parker too much because he's a pretty laid back guy. And sometimes people have accused him um, of that being his problem in the ring. But in terms of um, Parker's statements, he says it's great to be back in Manchester with the team. We've had a tremendous camp. This fight will be different from the first for sure. Not having a crowd made a big difference. I think Derek feeds off the crowd. I feed off them too. A lot of fighters feed off the crowd and just having no noise and hearing specific voices. It's pretty weird. The world title, my eyes are just purely on this weekend in Derek Chisora. I want to probably knock him out between rounds 6 and 10. And given Parker doesn't have really uh, many knockouts at any real level in the heavyweight division, and I'm not talking about busting up journeymen and, you know, like a Shondell Winters, that is not um, fighting at anything approaching world level. So to make this claim and Obviously, he's constantly made this claim about um, going to be knocking guys out ahead of fights and it's never happened. I think people will be a little bit sceptical, but also intrigued because he's been working with Andy Lee. He's had a full camp under him as opposed to what was it, five or six weeks last time after he parted ways with Kevin Barry. Um, but Lee was saying, and I'm not, I'm just going to sort of paraphrase some of this, basically that Chisora would have improved, etc. And he did say that he thought Chisora won the fight, um, uh, having just uh, sort of seen it live. But then when he uh, watched it back, he thought that Parker won. Uh, he says, if anything, the crowd will be a benefit to, Chis uh, to Chisora more than Parker because he'll feed off that energy. He's a big favorite. He's now the hero. People love him. His fight style. He's given us great fights over the years. We're here to do business. When Joseph gets in the ring, he'll be different in terms of the spite he has mentally and physically. And that is also a big claim because Joseph Parker hasn't really demonstrated, you know, spite and putting the hurt on people. In that first fight with Chisora, he had Chisora hurt late on. Um, Chisora was bailed on the ropes. He put it on him, clearly had him buzzed, stood back and uh, did nothing for a couple of seconds. Let, let Chisora off the hook. And that typified what people think about Parker and his aggression in the ring, that he just doesn't quite have enough mongrel, the sort of mongrel that he needs to have. Like, because if that was Chisora, uh, Parker on the other end of that, and that was Chisora, a la the sort of like Spooker fight, Chisora would have absolutely laid into Parker, not stood off and done nothing. So it's going to be interesting to see what Andy Lee has really done for Joseph Parker, because we might see little bits and pieces here. They're talking about improved technique um, over over the course of time. He, they think they're going to get a, a bit more power as a result of uh, throwing punches slightly differently with that uh, improved technique. So we will see. 
Uh, Dave Coldwell, he was talking about Chisora being, I mean, and this is the that sort of constant sort of yarn that you have about older fighters. The trainers wax lyrical about the experience and what they're now doing, that they're older, wiser, all that sort of stuff. Alan Babich, he was also, uh, he's obviously on this card. He is in a heavyweight fight, but he is saying that he's imp- um, intending to move uh, to Bridgerweight um, for his next fight or at some point that he's going to uh, go for the Bridgerweight title. But he does think in terms of his fight that's coming up, which is against a French journeyman, that it's going to be a routine knockout. So, yeah, make of that what you will. It's a disappointing opponent for Babbage. But anyway, uh, getting on to uh, Derek Chisora, some of his comments, and you can see here, here is some of the um, well, his face-off picture, a um, bit of the video there. We'll just uh, pause it. But earlier this week, so Chisora had uh, made some comments saying he's going to bring the pain. So uh, stating, I don't think they wanted to give me the rematch, really. And if I was him, I wouldn't take the rematch. I would moved on, but I was 100% sure I wanted to fight him. Different judges score fights in different ways, but what are we scoring now? For the pressure fighter and making the fight happen? Because if I don't go forward, we can just stand there and look at each other. I caught him off balance maybe because it wasn't a powerful knockdown when he got up. He was fine. He was in good hands. You can tell he's bolted up a bit. He's packed on more strength on since the first fight. You, so you can see he's coming with more power punches. If you look at his record from when he won the WBO title, he boxed Andy Ruiz in his hometown. He didn't KO him. He played it safe. He defended it here against Huey Fury and played it safe. And then he boxed AJ and he froze and he played it safe. So you can tell a fighter the guys that really want to fight. He might tell himself he wants to fight. And really and truly, he doesn't want to be there. It's been two years since I've boxed in front of a crowd. It's going to be amazing. And I hope I don't freeze. I enjoy it. How could you not? I think if you sell thousands of tickets, you enjoy it. AJ Canelo, Dillian, me, we all sell out arenas and we love it. You know people are coming to watch you fight and you want to give them a good night. It's a show. You must give them a show from the walkout to the last bell. I can't cry over spilt milk. I never have. I don't moan. I move on. Everyone's plan is to take it out of the judge's hands. I'm just going to go in and put on a great fight. I love Manchester. Manchester always comes out. I'm bringing the pain. It's going to be sick. I just want to give the fans what they want, and they want to see war. Joseph is going to try ride the storm early and come on the second half, but there is nowhere to hide. Derek Chisora's uh, statements and I guess for me some of the interesting parts of um, this rematch is going to be is Parker going to be more aggressive in the rematch and if so that may present Chisora some opportunities Parker is saying that he is going to uh, try to have a faster start and try to impose himself more on Chisora early in the fight but as we've seen in a lot of recent fights from Derek Chisora, there's sort of a, a two-speed uh, thing going on with his fights. First half of the fight or so, very strong start from Chisora, coming forward, applying pressure, putting on, on his opponents. Joseph Parker, Alexander Usyk, um, examples, very strong first six rounds. And you would say both those fights, Chisora was probably up at the midway point. And obviously... Chisora starts to fade and gas in the second half of fights. So that leaves the sort of question, is that going to happen again? But also if Parker is more aggressive, that's going to have more opportunities. And I know Chisora says Parker didn't want the rematch, but clearly he did because they've made it within six months. And realistically, it was the only big money fight, the biggest money fight out there at this point for Joseph Parker for a certain level of risk. He, he Derek Chisora is a guy as we know he's what 10 11 losses at this point a very solid and hard fighter a sort of gatekeeper to the world level and that's sort of been his position that he's occupied in the past you know however many years Um, so if you can win and win well against him you can move on to those bigger and better fights bigger money fights as well so I think for Parker after that first fight it was a bit controversial. It was close. He was the one that got dropped. Uh, he was sort of chasing the fight later on to try get a decision, which he did, and it was close. But in the same vein, there were no other sort of options out there that probably presented any more money. So I think this is why they've taken it. They believe they can beat Chisora, that Parker can put in a better performance. But these are these things we've been talking about Parker forever. 
will he put it all together? Is he going to show fans some of those attributes that, you know, have people thinking that he is one of the best in the world? Because in that first fight, I don't think we necessarily saw it. Is he going to be more aggressive, have more power? All these things that he's talked about for years. And here's a little grif a, a graphic. This is the Joseph Parker starter kit. I put this together in February 2020, and it still holds true today. It's the same old thing um, Parker is wax lyrical about that he's, you know, best camp more power going for the knockout and in this one seeing a knockout between round six and ten if i had to put money on it i'd say this is going to a decision because parker fights go to a decision they're close a little bit gritty a little bit ugly and sometimes a little bit controversial about who people thought won and the some of the rounds can be very hard to score and for chisora it's obviously is chisora who's 37 years old is he going to fade down the stretch again and he is an older fighter he's an experienced fighter but clearly we've had a couple of data points that suggest he's probably going to fade at some point during the fight and that's when parker can um, come back into it but don't be surprised if derek chisora again has a lot of success that he does bring the pain that he does have success and joseph parker probably is going to um be on the on the back foot that he is going to have to go through some adversity and you can't sort of um, write Chisora off at all because in a lot of these fights, which uh, sometimes go to decision, he is in them. And sometimes they can be close and controversial. Some people thought he won the Usyk fight. I thought Usyk won that. Some people thought that he won that first Parker fight. And obviously he's had other decisions over the years that haven't gone his way. But I do think probably very similar to the first one. For all the talk of improvements and everyone's going to be better and all that sort of stuff, could largely be the same a very similar sort of fight what are you expecting drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out